Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. My name is Ryan, aka Ryman, and this is our continuation of Ryman's bizarre adventures through Katawa Shoujo. If it sounds like that I am tired, it is because I am tired. Last three days now of work have been quite hectic. I mean, just today alone, I spent nearly over half the day, actually, yanking trees out of the ground and pulling tree branches the size of small cars off, of, off the trees and pulling down vines. My body aches. <laughs> so, I needed to do a recording. And I just knew Katara Shoujo would be perfect. Ow. Oh, no. <laughs> What? I can't believe you've done this to me, game. I needed to relax, and I totally forgot that I had to do a Misha. <laughs> you guys have any idea how much I'm starting to dread the Shizune playthrough? One, because of the constant Misha, and two, the, the, the thing that I, I encountered in my current lily path, you know exactly the thing I'm talking about. But we can't dread on the future. Instead, let's dread on the past. <clears throat> hey, Shreem! Go away. Hisao, you are my man. <laughs> Hisao is my spirit animal. <laughs> God, fucking beautiful. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Come on, he <sighs> Let me sleep. After two nights of not being able to sleep at all, the last thing I want is to be woken when I finally manage to. And maybe the last period of class with a textbook as my pillow. But I'll take whatever uh, sleep I can get by this point. See, Shane? Even she, Shane, wants you to get up! No! If anything, that is more encouragement to send me into a coma! I don't care what she wants! Leave me the fuck alone! Jeez, he, Shane! I'll just have to... If this bitch... Gives me a wet willy. We're going to war. Wait, what's Misha going to... You? This is bad. I'm up. I'm up. You don't have to... I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know what she was going to do. I can feel my face flowering into scarlet red blush. The students still in class are <laughs> in class are sitting bolt upright and and staring at the shouting fool who was sleeping just moments before. Damn it! I let my head smack down on the table with a noticeable thud. Misha's trademark uncontrolled laughter reverberates through the classroom. Hello, Shizune. I met your brother! As I turn my mournful eyes to the bespeckled Shizune beside her, she carefully adjusts her glasses, desperately trying to maintain the look of serious disapproval. Narrowing my eyes, I can see the, the badly hidden grin spreading across her face. Et tu, bitch. Shizune looks away quickly as she crosses her arm tightly, <laughs> barely on the edge of, of her control. <laughs> One of these days, someone in my family is going to walk in while I'm doing the Misha laugh, and I'm just going to turn around, and they're going to be staring at me in silent disappointment. 
and just walk out of the room. And there will be no coming back from that. There won't be. Misha's laughter doubles in volume as she glances at Shizune. All I can do is drag my hand down my face in resignation. I give myself a face off. <laughs> you too. Who's the one that slept in class, he seen? Yeah, yeah, it was me. Poor she Shishin was having a fit trying to wake you up, weren't you? What was she doing? Flailing her arms around, silently yelling. I move my eyes back to the standoffish Shizune, who with a single huff of confirmation returns to looking away with her arms crossed. Why was Shizune trying to wake me? I'm actually a very dangerous person to wake up. I love my sleep. I do. It is one of the very few things in this world, and I can count all of them on one fucking hand, that actually bring me joy. Sleep is one of them. You take that away from me, people do get hurt. You do not know my angry face. My normal, my normal looking face may look disgruntled, but that is my default face. You don't want to see angry face. I, as I angrily click. She said he wanted to give you, you the hands out how the substitute teacher gave out while he she was sleeping. Substitute? Current teacher is drunk as fuck. Handouts? Fuck! I suddenly find two sheets of paper thrust down on, on in front of my face. Following my hand holding them, I see the still pouting figure looking down at me with, with a distinct scowl. You do that is not a scowl. Do you want to see a scowl? No. <laughs> I guess I really am in the wrong here. Uh mm, sorry about that. No dice. The irritated face still holds. I clasp my hands together and flick my he head downwards in apology. <sighs> Very well. Sorry. She huffs and simply drops the papers on my desk. I think I would have noticed it anyway when I woke up on my own accord, but whatever. Damn! I look over my hands to see Shizune and Misha, signing frantically to each other, a look of frustration on Shizune's face. Ellipses! It looks to be less of dialogue and more of a uh, tirade, punctuated by it with silent glances at me. To say it's unsettling is an understatement. Um. The two suddenly stop signing and look at me in unison, both having exactly the same look of disapproval. In one fluid motion, Misha's hand suddenly extends high above me and comes rocketing down. Okay, okay, fun fact, Misha, you put hands on me, it is actually on. <laughs> These hands believe in equality, and I do think I'm legally allowed to defend myself when struck. So please, please, do what I think you're doing. She did, didn't she? She did, didn't she? Oh my god, she just fucking struck me, didn't she? Before I can even hope to react, my head is then bouncing up and down like a jack-in-the-box. I quickly bring my hands to my, my to my head, more a reflex than actual pain. Oh, she did! Oh, she did! Where's my rifle? Give me, give me my Arasaka! We're going to war! Be right back. Where? Fuck! I'm hitting! I'm hitting! Shit! I'm not supposed to hit with my rifle. Where's my ammunition? Wait! Wait! I just realized. <clears throat> Where's my sheath? We can't go to war yet. Not yet. But soon. What why am I what am I holding off on? Get on the bayonet, damn it. Thank you. What am I holding off on? We still have to do a recording. 
We still have to do a recording and, and then do other things. Okay, the computer is now firmly in my lap again. We're going to continue, but we need a fucking countdown from whenever this this video ends. Recollect ourselves. <sighs> Press onwards. I open my eyes to see two grin the two grinning at each other while exchanging an enthusiastic thumbs up. <sighs> she shan says she forgives you now, he shan. Could you forgive me with a little less force next time? <laughs> oh, today is going to be a good day when this ends because, oh. I look at the two with, bl with a blank face, Misha and Shizune. <laughs> Misha and Shizune, one is out nil. We're going to even those odds later, my boy. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> Ellipses. Oh, she Shan also says that you should check your student mail more often. I get mail? Oh, it's from the X. Mm -hmm. She produces a bright yellow envelope and hands it over with an ex ex uh, ex exuberant grin. Strange. Who could have written me a letter? Now is not the time, and most definitely not the place to find out, though. Yeah, these two bitches would look over my shoulder. <sighs> Giving up on the nap, so cruelly stolen from me, I rub my forehead and slowly get up, putting the sheet heat sand envelope in my bag before swinging it over my shoulder. I take a step back and move to depart with a small bow, while Misha clutches her sides laughing and Shizune nods back in a, in a cunt farewell. No, in a cunt farewell. I join the flow of students exiting the open door and turn the corner into the hallway. Aye, girl! <laughs> Only to end up face to face with Hanako. Whoa, uh, hey, Hanako. Good afternoon, Hisao. Silence falls between us, and busily chattering students uh, pass us by. She's fidgeting constantly, her eyes drawn to a rather unremarkable footwear. Her unremarkable footwear. We'll talk on that later, my boy. <laughs> I take the bridge of my nose in my fingers while I blink my eyes heavily and attempt to make things seem clearer. I'm barely staying awake as it is. Hanako, you want to say something? What is it? Uh, um, I wanted to give you this. Hmm? She holds out a small rectangular, 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 I can't speak. <laughs> I can't say the word rectangular piece of paper. I blink again to make out the text, though, through barely open eyes, slowly starting to make out what's written. Why was I given a shopping list? Eggs, two. Red loaf, one. Whole grain cereal, one. Th Time, time, time. I want to say it's time. We're running out of time. Let's move on. <laughs> A shopping list? I look upwards, raising an eyebrow. I usually go shopping with Lily, b b but I can't come, so... You want me to run errands for you? It's okay if you don't want to. I just thought that um, 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 maybe... Um, shh. It's okay. She's panicking. I sigh. Yet another battle lost, though this time by a weakly fought surrender. <laughs> I smile tightly and rest a hand on her head to calm her down. It's fine. I was going to go anyway. Just the stuff on this list. She nods and bows deeply, twice as if to make sure her gratitude perfectly clear. We, 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 we were going to meet outside 
Eat the school gates at six. F thank you. I was going to get it, but I need to study for the test tomorrow. Test? Oh, that's right. Science. How are you doing with it? She brightens ever so slightly. I've been spending more time on it than before. I think I can do okay. Good work, then. She, too, starts smiling. And much more earnestly than I... Than I... Than I at that. I can't talk anymore. It's been a long goddamn week. And I'm, it's, only, it's only Wednesday when I'm recording and... Fuck. I have full confidence that I can do fine out without any extra studying. But the fact that she is putting in, in the, the effort instead of just reading in the library is heartening. I'll grab your stuff and uh, take it to your dorm this evening. See ya! The small wave, we part ways. I'll go do my ho homework before meeting Lily. I should be able to take uh, care of it in time. Wrangling with a particularly complicated math problems had caused uh, me a little bit... L <sighs> Please be patient with me, folks. I am an idiot. Wrangling with a particularly complicated math problem has caused me to be a little a bit late for my meeting with Lily. Only a couple of minutes, but enough to make my, uh, my stuff smartly out into the courtyard and enter the school gates. I make a right and I make a right turn and start my way towards the small town below, leaving a few students turning the other way to, uh, to the bus station. Oh my god, I need to. My brain is actually shutting down on me as I speak. <sighs> Breathe, Ryan. It's just reading. You've only been at it for like 15, 16 minutes. <sighs> I know you're tired from fucking pulling trees out of the ground. But we can get through this. I just spit all over my computer. <laughs> it's all falling apart. I slip my right hand into my pocket as I walk into the, the orange sunlight of dusk. Thankfully, the sweltering summer heat started to die down, making way for a pleasant, cool breeze. When I stretch my hands high above my head, a familiar figure takes form, cane in her right hand. Ah, Lily! She stops and turns around, swiveling her head slightly to try and work out exactly where the voice comes from. Oh boy, it's me! I quickly catch up to her, coming beside her and matching her slow pace as we resume walking. Good afternoon, Hisao. Hi there! I glance up at the sky. The, a distant tinge of orange discolors the clouds, washing the footpath in its light. Long shadows from the trees fall across the wide road down the hill. So, Hisao, what brings you here? You're not in the know? Uh, just going to town to grab some groceries. Hanako sent me. Hanako sent you? Yeah, she said she needed to stay for a test tomorrow. I was going to come down anyway, so I'll just buy her stuff as well. Unspoken is that Lily really could use uh, some help getting, to get the food, but it's an obvious fact that neither of us needs to, to stay. It's good to hear she's studying for it. I thought the same thing when she asked me to come with you. We continue walking down the street. The familiar sound of her cane echoing through the air as we go, except for the occasional passing car and, or and the, the leaves whispering in the branches. There's a blissful silence. Thank God I can finally relax for the first time today. But we can't exactly fall asleep on our feet. Try hard as though as I have might have tried in the past. I wouldn't recommend it. I glance over at Lily. That porcelain fa 
Are we zooming in? Okay, we're going in hot. <laughs> that porcelain face of her never seems to lack that air of relaxed confidence. I guess the same could be said of her personality, too. As she silently walks, her face remaining pointed to the street ahead of her. I look ahead and savor the cool air blowing all over my face. This is probably the calmest moment I've had since about... Well, face up. Uh, since I've had the about face my life took so recently. Fuck Ryan! To have it while walking to get some groceries. What a weird life. I feel the crumbled up note rubbing against my hand in my pocket. And pull it out to check the, its contents. Let's see here. Eggs, bread, cereal, thyme, lettuce, shaved hair. That was not... These two were not on the list before! What the fuck? <laughs> that sounds like quite a bit to carry back along with, you, uh, with your own. Yeah, just how much does this girl eat anyway? She cooks this how. She cooks. Easy bake oven. It's a wonderful thing. My mind suddenly clicks that, yes, there's actually <laughs> he is a person beside me. Fuck, fuck, I went back the wrong way! Ah, uh, fuck it. Wait, whoa, whoa, wait, I, I mean... She laughs wholeheartedly. My, my, Hisao. Her giggle punctuates her words, though she's making little effort to suppress them. Quite direct today, aren't we? Yeah, you got me there. Still, it is quite a bit. Usually I go shopping with Hanako, so I know what she buys. It's the same thing every week. Huh? She a good cook? She gives a nervous giggle. It's usually me who ends up cooking. I used to do so for Akira, so it's no problem doing it for Hanako as well. You can cook? But I'm not addressing that. So that <laughs> you go in head first, first, though, my boy. Be my guest. A short hum with an amused lit uh, emanates from beside me. I wonder if the fact that she seems unamused by my comments so often is actually genuine, or rather just from a, a want to make me more comfortable in addressing her blindness. There are ways around it. Some meals are more difficult to cook than others because of being a unable to see what I'm doing, but it usually only takes a little more time. Fingers can double as very as a very useful measurement tools, for example. It makes sense, but she'd have to be pretty careful not to hurt herself. I wonder how many times that's happened, given that it sounds like she's cooked alone for possibly years while Akira worked and her parents were gone. With that, the conversation trails off. Compared to the awkward silences with Hanako, Lily seems generally content to say what she thinks and stay quiet when there's nothing to say. <laughs> the slick road under my feet is bathed in an orange glow, the occasional fallen leaf crunching underfoot as we walk. I let out a deep yawn. Fuck, it's contagious. God damn it, his hell. Mm. My lack of sleep coming back to haunt me. Did you not get much sleep last night? Weren't we drunk last night? <laughs> I couldn't sleep at all for the last two nights. Probably insomnia. <laughs> he says he's got insomnia. <laughs> Trade ya! Lily's face suddenly becomes worried. It feels like a personal failure every time she gets worried about my well-being. Even if it's generally nice to know someone cares. You have insomnia. Aren't you going to see the nurse about it? Nah, no real deal. It's happened before uh, a few times. My meds screw with my sleeping occasionally. I have a solution. Let's stop taking the meds. <laughs> no, Stan Ryan, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Come on, it's not your fault. At least I shouldn't have uh, any trouble getting to sleep tonight. You do worry me sometimes. I... Worry you? But why? I reach around and scratch the back of my neck. I can't... 
do that right now, so you have that up on me, Sal, because my the back of my neck is sunburned, so it burns. <laughs> I kind of want to address this. Hey, Lily. Hmm? I don't mean to sound weird, but... Please try to forget about my heart condition. She looks kind of lost. I hardly blame her. I guess what I'm trying to get at is... Just don't treat me differently because of it. Now she bows her head slightly... Uh, her white cheeks reddening almost <laughs> imperceptibly. It's only natural to worry about those around you. It is? We're going to have to ask the guys. Uh, anyway. Well, it's nice to, to know there's someone like that out here. It may be somewhat embarrassing to say, but it's the truth. Lily takes a breath to regain her composure and manages a gentle smile, though her cheeks remain flushed. The final downhill walk to the store passes in silence. Uh, oh god, that burp came out of nowhere. I've been trying to... Oh, oh. I can read that! It says beer! <laughs> I, oh my... Oh god, I was... <laughs> I, did, I, I did the same thing the first time I, I saw that. It's just a C of foreign language and the one English word. Store woman, you are not getting a voice. I can't muster the energy for it anymore. <laughs> Welcome! I suppose I'll get my stuff first, and Hanako's on the second round. I grab two well-worn red baskets from the stack beside the entrance and pass one to Lily. Just as she did before, she lays it on the ground and slides a retracted cane between the basket handles before picking it back up with her right hand. When she takes hold of my arm, her in her own, I sus uh, I'm surprised just as how fast this kind of casual contact has become so natural. Mostly due to necessity, you no know, doubt. Shall we? Sure! While we navigate around the store, the odd person occasionally passes uh, us pace is no heat at all. It's nice compared to the, to the stares and whispers around the city. Oh wait, that's right, because she's like... She's fucking tall. <laughs> With piercing blue eyes. <laughs> as, we, <laughs> as we read each aisle, I quickly check with Lily to see what she needs and grab it along with the, what I want. What, what, blah, 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 along with what I want. Putting our items into their respective baskets. It's an odd feeling to be dependent on so much for something so basic as shopping. Hanako would be, be practically a necessity for her to, if, to, to pick out what she wants, after all. <sighs> right. I'm pretty much done with both my stuff and Hanako's. You need anything else, Lily? No. This should be everything. Off we go, then! Oddly, there's a quick, uh, quick uh, mile long. Considering the store is only large enough to warrant one counter, seems like it would take a while. Damn. Lily gives an inquisitive look, unable to see the reason for my complaint. The queues are really long. Looks like we'll uh, have to wait. What did I say before queue? I'm an idiot. How strange. Sharing the same mood of uh, resignation, we reluctantly take our place at the end of the line. One person finishes, the line moves up. Another person finishes, the line moves up. Is this part really necessary? <laughs> By the time we finally reach the head of the line, I'm so close to dozing off that Lily has to gently pat me on the back for me to move up. It's how? It's how? Oh, 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 no, I'm not dead. I'm not. She gives a, a sh short sigh of uh, consternation as I move up, getting the groceries for Hanako and me and putting it into separate bags. Thank you, please come again. By the time we emerge from the store, Lily's holding a single bag while I struggle to carry four, both hands well and truly full. It's a lot of work, but thankfully the items in them are light. Even without looking skyward, it's obvious uh, that a surprising amount of time has passed, the road outside is being dark and lit by street lamps. 
Once Lily retrieves her cane, we set out back to the dormitories the way we came, leaving the welcoming warm glow of the store. Hello, Moon. Despite the road being empty of cars, the full bags ab uh, abundantly make up for the lack of noise, constantly clunking and squeaking together. My, my, Hisao. It's good to find that you're eating well. Bitch, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm a growing boy, after all. I need to eat all I can. At least that's the same excuse I give. <laughs> hmm, it must be nice being a man. <laughs> Where's this conversation going? M money? Seemingly not noticing or ignoring my surprise at the completely out of the left field comment, she continues on without missing a beat. Weight doesn't really bother you when eating most of the time. <laughs> oh boy. I get what you mean. Women tend to worry about stuff like that more than we do, I, I guess. Exactly. It makes me somewhat envious, to be honest. Well, it's not like we can outright ignore it. With an affirmative now, we continue on our walk. Huh, that's right. What is it? Hanako mentioned your birthday was earlier this year. Do anything special for it? She gives a long pause, lost in thought for a few seconds, as she recalls the event. Not really. It was just Hanako and me having a little party during the night after school. Your birthday's supposed to be a big event, you know. Sounds like a pretty lonely way to spend a birthday, just her and Hanako staying overnight. Birthdays always felt like a family occasion for me. There were a time when, in spite of their full-time jobs, both my parents would make an effort to be there for the day, or at least for the party beforehand. It reminds me how Lily mentioned that she hadn't seen her family in such a long time, and even ended up moving away from Akira's house afterwards. But I guess this is uh, it's the same situation as mundane as these. Considering uh, her inability to read the packaging, just getting groceries would be a pain without somebody else around. In the end, she's uh, she just has Hanako and me. Hanako and I. And Akira when she's off from work. Be that as it may, she still seems to have many more distant friends among the students. Not to mention people like Yuko. It seems to be her own choice that there's such a separation between those who are close to her and those who she only socializes with. It humbles me a little to see how much Lily seems to have her life set up and going just the way she wants. Yet, Hanako is there for her to celebrate her birthday, and I'm here helping her with shopping. It's a weird kind of symbosis, uh, I suppose. Are you alright, Hisao? Sorry? You just seem to go very quiet, that's all. Ah, uh, sorry. I was just thinking. Thinking's very dangerous for me. What is my time? I can do more! Oh? Hmm. Ah, uh, now I've piqued her curiosity. Feels kind of over-personal to talk about, though. Do we tell the truth, or do we avoid the subject? I'm thinking we tell the truth. For goodness sake, how much of her do we know at this point by now? I mean, she seems to have been always very open and honest with me, so I guess I need to return the favor. It was just kind of... I was thinking about how you can seem to have everything so sorted out, even with Hanako relying on you. I can admit that even I kind of relied on you when I first transferred in. I think it's a good quality to have. I turned to Lily, surveying her reaction. She's forcing herself to look forward and furrowing her brow quite a bit. Her face looks a bit awkward, as if she was trying to find just the right words. Lily? I would thank you, but... Assuming that I don't rely on the presence of others is too much. You'd be wrong to think that Hanako simply depends on me with nothing in return. What the fuck? What the fuck happened? Are we done updating stupid shit now, computer? 
can I get back to our regularly scheduled program? Oh, I can. Thanks. She seems to have a bit of trouble saying it, even though it's largely uh, what I'd thought already. If she tried so hard to maintain her independence, and as anyone would have uh, done in her position, cited or not, maybe she finds it hard to talk about her, her own needs. It's only now that I realize uh, an omission in what she says. In what she says, though, I decide to follow it up, largely in jest, to avoid things getting too personal. Oh, <laughs> and what about me? She suddenly runs ahead of me and turns, blocking me off. With a smile, she holds her hands behind her and leans, and she leans forward. You're different. Different how? I've been told. I've been told that by a great many a people. <laughs> And with that, she turns back and continues to walk ahead of me, new found, new, uh, with a newfound spring in her step. All I can do is raise an eyebrow and, and give a dazed grin. I don't think I've ever seen this playful and teasing side of her before. So, I'm different. It's hard to work out the exact context, but knowing her, this ambiguity was intended. Our relationship has been changing. At the very least, simply because I've begun to stand on my own feet, eat more, and started getting more curious about the situation of those around me. As to why, probably a mix of personal curiosity, and I want to try and work out how to deal with my uh, situation. I'm not sure of Lily, though. That's why her own statement, so similar to my own feelings towards her, throws me off so much. Watching her make her way up to the street, cane tapping from left to right, I decide to sell them at her later, and just smile. This is nice uh, side to her, and I don't want to forget it. My time? I can squeeze in a little bit more time, child. Eventually, we get to the girls' dormitories, both my arms uh, aching from the weight of the two sets of groceries. Bitch, you said it was a light load! <laughs> We're finally here, phew. I will gladly trade with you, Hisao, your fucking grocery bags, for all the goddamn logs and boulders I had all up <laughs> Fuck you, Hisao. I bend down to wipe my forehead with the back of my hand. Lily uh, stops in front of her door and sets down her bag, fishing around in her pocket for a key. Thank you, Hisao. I really appreciate your help. Ah, uh, this is nothing. It might be nothing to you, but it's definitely something for me. With that, she fades into the wall, and with that, she steps through the door, closing it behind her. I blink. Those were nothing but honest things, but I can't help the feeling something different about them. Anyway, I have something else to do before I can pull well, on the head of my leisure. I just had the thought that I totally forget to give Hanako her shit <laughs> and just walk out of the building. I turn back to the door to Hanako's room and proceed to knock twice in quick succession, the bags still in my head rustling together. I have your shit! After a couple of seconds, the door slowly opens. If one weren't looking closely, they would uh, be... Be forgiven for thinking it hadn't moved at all. I twist my head to the side to try to peer through the tiniest uh, sliver of the, of the gap between the door and the door frame. Hey, Hanako, I have your shit! Ah. Uh. With that, she opens the door completely, making your plain room visible o over her shoulder. Sparsely decorated, it's probably even more unremarkable than my room. I hold out my right arm, both bags are almost pulling it back down with the, their weight. The, the, the thank you, Hisao. I'm sorry to make you carry them all this way. It's fine, don't worry. Just don't make me do it every day, okay? No, uh, Hisao, apparently you need to do it every day to bulk up your arms. Collapsing under the weight. Fuck you. I pass the bags to her and give a lighthearted chuckle. 
After the initial transfer of weight, she manages to take them easily. Yeah, she can fucking take the bags. God damn it, boy. I'll be off then. Night, Hanako. Good night. Uh, um, see you in class t tomorrow. With a deep bow, her groceries still uh, held in both hands, she steps back and shuts the door. Making my way back, <sighs> repressing urge to sing stupid songs, making my way back to my own dorm, I put one bag onto the other Earth's hand to, to balance them out. Even as I do so, I can't get Lily's lighthearted smile out of my mind. When I'd first met her, it would have been nearly impossible to imagine her like that. Indeed, it feels like we've become closer in the past few weeks since I've gotten to, to know both her and Hanako. The time I spent with her each day, the small exchanges of happiness we share, those small moments of joy I get, uh, as I get closer to her. I'm far from from certain, but I think these are just normal feelings of friendship. You can't see the face I'm making right now, but... It's really one of confusion. I'm gonna have to ask the rest of the guys if this is how friendship is supposed to feel. <laughs> Once I return to my room, I start away my groceries and begin getting ready for the night. Oh, no. The letter. I swapped the school bag. It's in front of the further. I swapped the school books in my bag for those I'll need tomorrow. Pulling out the yellow envelope Misha gave me earlier in the process. I got so sidetracked by the one thing after another that I couldn't deal with it earlier. Who could have ran at me? I wonder. The name neatly adorned on the back of the envelope freezes me in my tracks. It's been so since it's been so long since I've seen her writing. There's a little chance I could uh, identify it as her otherwise. It wanna go. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, that's the bitch who gave us the heart attack. Why? Why would she have ridden me? I can't think of any good reason for her to do this. For her to do this, I almost don't open the letter. But there's been, uh, but there'd be little point to that if I just left it alone. Its mere existence would gnaw me until I did something about it. Let's burn it! I look down at the piece of paper on my desk. It's bright in summery decoration, beaming happily at me. The lettering is in pink! <laughs> Jarring badly with a yellow sunflower border on the on the card the handwriting is neat the characters haven't been written uh, thoughtfully and with an unusual amount of care i barely gave the letter a second thought when it was given to me but now i can't get its contents out of my mind oh boy <sighs> well i'd like to say that i don't know oh wait no this is still his south speaking <laughs> thought for a second we were reading the letter. Well, I'd like to say that I don't know why she used such an old-fashioned method of communication, considering a phone call or an email would have been both much faster and easier. The answer feels obvious enough given the content. A letter leaves a comfortable distance between the sender and the recipient. Unlike a phone, it isn't required that you engage in conversation. And unlike email... There's the least expectation of an immediate reply. Statements such as, The third year seem to be very anxious about the final exams. And, It's so weird to think that we we're already seniors, isn't it? Or just small talk. Small talk that could have been achieved simply by replying to any of the messages I sent her while in the hospital. I ran out of breath while I was saying that. The ending... Though, in true reason she sent this, the last couple of lines, added almost as an afterthought. Now we're reading the bitch. I wonder if we'll meet again. Perhaps it's for the best we do. It's a statement that should hurt. I've always heard breakups are nasty stuff. But it feels like this is simply a reaffirmation of what we both already knew instead. 
It's a preceding text. No more than small talk. That makes me feel most uneasy. I can't figure out why, no matter how long I sit here and look down at this bright and summery piece of paper. If you would like to correspond with me, by all means, write me back. Wait a minute. Was that the Emmy voice I was trying to do for her? Oh, God. <laughs> it's plainly obvious that she is not the type of hateful letter to be replied to. In the end, this letter is no more than a simple uh, abdication of responsibility. A final statement to reassure herself that our relationship is over. Oh, I've got a letter to send her. Dear Darla, I hate your stinking guts. <gasps> you make me vomit. <laughs> As such, I find I have little problem in scrunching the letter and envelope into a ball and tossing it into the waste bin. Ridding myself of its existence. Normally, people either burn it or flush it. I go to bed with mixed feelings. Cheated to have a pleasant evening by this intruder from my past. Ironically, it takes a while before I can manage to sleep. That's the end of the chapter. Part of me was terrified it was going to be a knock on the door. <laughs> With that, ladies and gentlemen, I think I should probably end it here. What? I sweat profusely, awaiting the dreaded moment. Each tick of the clock uh, tenses my muscles that much more, every minute making more hair stand on end. It's coming for me. I can feel it. What the f- Monica, did you get into my cat with Shoujo? Monica? Death in the form of a single sheet of paper. She's here, isn't she? I take... I take a small pile of papers from the stool in front of me and pass it backwards after plucking it out of the top piece. The music is still going! Monica? Looking at the top right, uh, right of the page, I find my fears realized within a small red circle. 43. I hang my head in sign resignation, cursing out of my breath. Fuck! I can feel an aura of a similar sentiment rising from the entire class. It's strange, but the fact lifts my mood in a minuscule amount. Misery loves company, I suppose. As the teacher opens her mouth, the room braces for the inevitable onslaught. Only be saved with the last minute. We quickly move to collect our bags and leave for a lunch. And for lunch post haste, but the teacher delivers a parting uh, broadside. Fucking failed the test. There's a fucking test score. We'll be discussing the test scores next lesson. Needless to say, there will be quite some discussion to be had. It's a fucking test score. You put me through that at the end of the fucking episode for a test score. Fuck you. Folks, we're going to end it here for now. If you had fun listening to me stumble my way, and I do mean stumble my way through the bizarre adventures of Kato Jojo, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you wish to see more. Um, also, feel free to do so if you want to see what other wacky adventures I usually get myself into. Follow that Facebook page if you want to keep up with all the news and the content. And if you want to have fun and be part of a small, awesome little gaming community, why not join us on the Discord? Links for all this stuff is in the description below. Now then, where's my rifle? Here we go. Where's my machete? Here we go. Let's go have a chat with Misha and her friends. <laughs>